So today I'm thinking about EDC. So EDC, or everyday carry, it's this very postmodern type of hobby in that it's making a hobby out of something that most people just do every day, like an online community for drinking water, or putting on your socks, or commuting to work. So it's this hobby of taking extra care into the items you carry every day and being prepared. So your wallet, your keys, and your phone starts being your wallet, your keys, your flashlight, your knife, your phone, and then it progresses to this point where you appear to be a riot policeman in a war. But it is a thing, and like any sufficiently advanced hobby, is now at the commercial point where you can spend thousands perfecting every element of what you carry in your pockets. And that goes especially if you have certain items that fit into your lifestyle. Why does that sound dodgy? For Okay, for example, if I was an American, that would mean deciding which armor-piercing bullets and laser scopes I add to my shoulder-mounted killing arsenal. But for me, it means which camera I'm carrying. I want it small, I want it high quality, and I want it capable. So usually it means this, the Sony RX100 Mark VII. It's cute, has a 24-200mm lens, but on the other hand, it has a 1-inch CMOS sensor. So no matter the capability, its low-light capability is not as good as a phone. So why not bring my full-frame camera everywhere? namely the size. My favorite 50mm lens, the 1.8S, did not fulfill the smaller, lighter optics that we were promised in the world of mirrorless, meaning this camera body becomes kind of unwieldy. But one thing I like Nikon for is that they're prioritizing small lenses. The 26mm f2.8 and 28mm f2.5 are great, but I don't like that sort of lens length. It's kind of too wide and it's not really, it's just too close to your normal field of view. It doesn't feel special. But what about this 40mm f2? It's the brightest of the small trio, it's light, the whole setup is now less than a kilo because it's all plastic, and look at how small the setup becomes now, it's barely larger than the grip. So what I did is I decided, is this my EDC lens? I put one on my Z6 and took a photo every day for 40 days, trying to take all the types of photos I can, and I'm calling it the 40-40-40 challenge. Um, let's look at them. So first up, we've got this shot of the Sydney Olympic swimming pool. I think even years after COVID, it's weird to be around this many people at once. Because it's on the wider end, I didn't have to stop it down too much. I actually think I have it at 5.6 here, and it's pretty sharp all the way through the field. This one is more of a blue-orange, teal-orange sort of set that I like to do. Shot at F2 uh, to 50th of a second, some skateboarders down at the Sydney Skate Park. Uh, this is more some street photography uh, in Surrey Hills of two interesting doors. Um, look, sometimes that's the best shot you take in the day, I mean, you've got to take it. But again, um, I don't think I had to correct it too much. Here's a sunset shot at uh, f6.3 of the uh, rail bridge near where I live in Walleye Creek. Uh, this street shot of this rather um, fancy chap with his e-bike watching us eat burgers at uh, this place called Marrickville Metro, a Slim's Burgers, shout out. Uh, and this is a uh, young basketballer at uh, the Marrickville PCYC basketball courts. Um, I like the way that the action sort of frozen here, I like the way the colours came through. Uh, this is a street shot um, of this bean seller, this guy selling beans off newspaper in uh, Hurstville here in Sydney. Um, this was corrected quite a lot and I think it probably softened quite a bit. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the, that bin is still very bent to one side. Bike track alongside the airport where the planes come into land, this is where I commute past every day. The light kind of came through really nicely here. And again, I think there's a kind of an interesting element to this, even though it's at F6, again, F6.3. And uh, I think the, the way the focus falls off is quite a nice and pleasing. Is the camera weather sealed? I don't really know, and it really needed to be. This is uh, abject downpour the following day. Um, shot at 5.6 uh, at 60th of a second. Try and get a bit of motion blur into that rain. Um, but I'm standing under cover, and I definitely put the camera away before I ran out to catch the, the train that I wanted to get, um, which was that one, I believe. So I must have done it quickly, which I, I guess the size helped. This is in Sydney Central train station, uh, again at 5.6. I guess I shoot mostly around that depth. It's relatively sharp. There's a fair bit of shadow lifting here and there's a bit of dodge and burn to get some of the subjects out. But, uh, and this is again Sydney train station. Um, might even be the same day, I might have cheated. But uh, this is a um, relatively soft, uh, I think this is at ISO 2500. Um, it's probably more a limita limitation of the Z6 than the lens here. So this was at 
uh, ISO 5000. Um, this is that same spot that you saw a few shots ago where the planes fly overhead. It's an airport. Um, this is me standing right next to it at 40 mil. There's a bit of a crop here, but not a massive one. This is a, this is a chicken. Um, I think the boke is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's a bit onion ringy and it's in sort of odd shapes, but I think it's kind of pleasing. I, it looks kind of nice. He's very sharp there, giving me the stink eye there because I didn't have any food for him. These are some uh, bats in uh, the Torella community. It's just probably the best I could get on the day. Odd, scary tunnel that I often pass through. This is actually shot at F2, but it looks kind of, you know, I was trying to get some blur in the foreground to make the everything look spookier. It's my son doing a bomb into the, you know, into a kid's pool. I know you're not allowed to do that. It, it, it shouldn't say anything about my priorities as a parent. Again, pretty sharp. This is at 6400th of a second and the droplets falling off him are relatively sharp. Here's my son again riding a bike through some rain. So as you can see, there's a big mix of sun and rain at the same time in Sydney at this time. Again, this shot at 6400th of a second had really nice water splashes. You can see they're really sharp, but then the fall off is nice and the uh, blur in these bits here where you've got the corrugated metal actually looks kind of nice. Here's some high speed shots at another pool. You can see a bit of uh, loca on these bubbles. I do like the way the blur falls off and, and you know, this is when the lens acts like a fast prime. You know, there's heaps of depth of field uh, at F2. Um, this is a fairly straightforward shot of a, uh, of a cool old caravan. Um, I probably just corrected it and removed some leaves off the ground. Under a bridge, not the Anthony Kiedis one. It's, this is again in Wallow Creek. This is again at, oh, this is F9. I think it's nice and sharp and detailed. Here's a portrait of my wife drinking a non-alcoholic beverage in public. Officer. Yeah, look at the interesting way that the bokeh works here. I want to say streaky characteristic. Um, this is a, an F8 shot of a basketball court at sunset. It had nice shadows and was for some reason completely empty. I think if you look at the detail on the fence, it looked really nice. Okay, this is a really corrected shot of the uh, Red Rock building, which is the control center for Sydney trains. Um, it's quite corrected in terms of geometry because it's not a tilt shift lens and this building's really tall. I think it held up pretty well, but not entirely. I like this one. This is uh, just a shot of a guy enjoying a beer in a deck chair, watching, well, I don't know what he's watching. There's really not much to see, but I didn't, couldn't think of anything to do this particular night. So I just took long exposures of cars going by the roundabout in front of my house. The width, again, is probably a limiting factor. I couldn't really get good night shots of the sky. Also, it was really cloudy. This shows the foreground blur shooting this. This is actually a mannequin, not a person. She looks really sharp and she pops out of the background and you can see the fall off there around her. It's quite nice. I wish I knew what these flowers are called. They were nice, they're orange. There's a shot right up into the sky with the sun coming right through the plants there. The, these are some fruit bats in my community. This is apparently how they drink. They dunk themselves in the water and they uh, get little bits of water um, on, and then suck it off their fur. I think this really shows that 40 mil is not a good wildlife lens. This was an odd bear in front of a housing project on the way to work. It was kind of sad. Shot came out kind of nice and moody. It looks like a bear that's had its entrails dragged out on the ground. Um, look at the way the out of focus areas are in the grass though. They are kind of pleasing to me. This is a water tower in Walleye Creek, I really like uh, the way these pigeons had the morning sun kind of creating an outline on them in front of the water tower, regardless of whether you think of them as sky rats. Uh, this is a shot at Google headquarters. Um, I, it's not a good shot. It's just the only one I took that day. A shot of Parramatta City. Um, not much correction going on here other than the color grading. I really like this shot um, compositionally, uh, but yeah, it has good depth of field. Um, I, I hip fired this one because I had forgotten to have a shot that day because I had a commercial job. But I fired this one off at 2.8 and I guess because of the distance, everything is in the right amount of focus with the right amount of fall off. This is someone's garden. Um, probably I think it had a secret look to it because it was very overgrown. Not one of my greatest, but sometimes when you're doing a shot every day, you have to do whatever you can which I also did the next night. These are my sons and some other kids playing basketball on long exposure at a court in a pub. Yeah, I, this is not a great shot either. Let's move on. This looks like it's an aqueduct. It's probably a sewage pipe. This pipe is probably full of poo, but 
It had a nice tropical old school architecture look to it and a good vanishing line. So um, I really like this shot. It's a backlit portrait of my wife and her friends off to a metal gig. And I think that the way that the um, fall off at F2 worked out is really nice and makes this lens look really good. Trying some flash portraiture of my son. This is just with a small flash mounted just off to the top right. Again, you can see the focus is fairly close. There's lots of detail. And that's his brother who also wanted to get on the shot. I don't know, I really like these shots, but they probably would have been better with a 50 mil, but the 40 mil was perfectly capable. The proportions look a little odd, a little wide. That effect that you get of a wide angle lens where your face sort of folds away from the lens around your nose is sort of here, but not completely. A long exposure, this by chucking the camera in a tree, I guess if you like sun stars, if you like sun stars, then they're there. My son's third birthday, this lease shows with really strong backlighting, what it can look like. It's just a really gray day. And then last one, this is a shot of a climbing gym. A lot of detail here, it's sharp all the way through. This is at ISO 1000 f4.5, so again, quite deep in spite of things. I vignetted it a lot because I didn't choose my shot as well as I could have. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's, that's the end of that review. Right, so in conclusion, just a couple of things I wanted to say about the 40mm f2 Nikkor. Uh, lens. One thing I really noticed is the small aperture on the front of the lens. It does kind of collect dirt a lot easier than I guess the larger lenses or maybe it's more concentrated because there's less glass there. I did find myself constantly cleaning dust out of there. Um, maybe I'm just a dusty person. Most definitely I am a dusty person. It doesn't close focus particularly well. Man this would be such a great lens if it had some semi-macro capabilities. Um, the chicken's about as close as I got. The bokeh is odd but I kind of like it. It's, I would say it's characteristic. I, as you see there was lots of different interesting shapes there that, uh, that made things look nice. Um, yeah actually it's one of my favorite parts of this lens. I wasn't blown away by the sharpness particularly compared to the 50mm f1.8 but I didn't need to be because uh, this is not you know if I need optimum quality I, I'm going to be carrying more things. Um, what I needed it to be was sharp enough and was it sharp enough? Absolutely. I actually think there's this somewhat somewhat deserved idea that Nikon photographers are star and bird chasers who sort of stand around in uh, those floppy broad brimmed hats and rain gear trying to get these long exposures or uh, finding odd birds of paradise. I guess when you're looking at those sort of things characteristics like sharpness are super super important but you know there's other types of photography there's the more spontaneous type which I do and for that, a 40mm lens like this, the level of sharpness is more than enough. Sharpness, as we know, isn't everything. Characteristics, the interesting parts of a frame aren't just how sharp they are. This is a lens that is less snooty. I think a lot of Nikon photographers are kind of snooty about the sort of things they do. You know, 600mm lenses and heavy bodies and vertical grips. This is the opposite of that, and I like that. But is it my leave on the body lens? No. Uh, well, kind of, it is. If I'm, most of the time, the main problem I had with the lens was it's just a little bit wider than I like. I'm always bored looking at perspectives that my own eye can replicate. I always want either wider or tighter. You're reframing what normal eyes see um, rather than just capturing what they see. But the size does mean that when I just need to have my camera on me and just want to throw it in a bag, the lens that I will put on is this. So not EDC, it's AEDC, it's almost everyday carry. HEDC, HEDC, half of everyday carry. That's what I have to say about that. Um, thanks for watching my first new video in months and uh, hopefully I'll have another one soon. Cheers.